God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he gone because I know who he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he Gotta say that again. And life is worth the living just because he lives. My life is worth the living just because he lives. My the living just because he lives hallelujah my life is worth the living just because Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not about anything else. My life, my life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. This is my version now. Because he lives, all my fear is gone. Because, because I know oh, 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 He owes my future My life is worth The living just because he lives my life my life is worth is worth the living because he lives.
not about anybody else. It's not about coronavirus. It's not about being black. It's not about what I used to do. It's, it's, it's only because of this. You see, my life, my life is worth, it's worth living because my Jesus lives. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel, Yeshua, Yahweh, Elion. Elohim, the great I am, oh glory be to God, the comforter, the healer, the balm in Gilead, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hey, my life is worth the living just because Hallelujah. I don't know about you today, but my life is worth living because Jesus lives. I know it's getting worse. The, 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 the news we're getting is worse. <laughs> it's not getting better. It seems to be getting worse. I got to tell you, uh, Something I heard yesterday at work, and uh, it caught me totally by surprise because I hadn't listened to the news. I, I was busy just focusing on caring for my patients, getting my treatments done, and just being in my little world of blessing the Lord and thanking Him for His goodness. And it was getting closer to the end of the shift, and uh, some of my coworkers, they were talking, and I didn't know exactly what they were discussing. So, one asked me a question. They said, said let me, let's ask, let's ask, let's ask Queen Esther, let's ask Queen Esther. Some call me Queen, some call me Esther. Let's, let's ask uh, Queen Esther. Listen, uh, uh, did you ever go to the, par to, to, uh, to, the, to the bars or parties or clubs or, or dancing or this kind of a thing? And, you know, I, I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I did. They said, well, you, you did? I said, yeah. They said, well, um, I mean, you danced? I said, yeah. And, and well, I said, well, hey, I did everything everybody do at the clubs and, you know, whatever. I danced. You know, we partied. Yeah. I said, I did all of that. I did all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at the clubs. I was at the dance hall. I was at the parties. Yeah, we danced. I said, I said, you know, we, we, you know, women, women pretend they're not chasing men, but you know, you can chase men. You put yourself in position so they'll see you. You know what I'm saying? So you know, we, we, we did that, and then we were chased by men, and you know, and just all looking for love in all the wrong places. You know, we talked about all that. I did all of that. Yes, we parted, we drank, we did all the things. I pretended that I knew how to smoke even. I would take the cigarettes and try to puff smoke and make it look like I was really smoking and knew what I was doing. And everybody knew I wasn't, didn't know what I was doing. I was just faking because I wasn't about to swallow that smoke. <laughs> I didn't do it. But the question they asked me, they said, you did? I said, yes. And they said, 
was it here? And I said, no, no. When I, when I moved to Rochester, I had already given my life to the Lord. They said, well, will you dance for me right now? I said, no. They said, why not? I said, because I dance for Jesus now. I, I, I don't dance for the, for the world, for the devil anymore. I dance for Jesus now. And so then one was determined, one of the fellow nurses. I believe the Lord is really drawing her. She, she looked at me and she said, well, will you go to, to a club now, a party now? I said, no. She said, why not? I said, well, uh, I don't have any reason to go. What, what would be my purpose for going? Um, I said, when I was in the world, I was going. I had a purpose. I knew what I was going for. I was either going looking for something or, or to receive something or to find something. I was partying in the world. That's what I was after. I knew uh, I dressed the way I, I dressed and we did what we knew what we were going to look. That was my purpose. I had a purpose to go. And so she stopped for a second. She thought about it. said, hmm, I guess it does make sense. If you have no purpose, why would you be going? So my, I told her, my, this is my testimony, see? The Lord changed me. Uh, I forgot something. When they first asked me uh, if I still did all that, I said, no. I said, that was the old me. That's what I meant to say. That was the old me that did all that. Yeah, the old me did all that stuff, man. I was out there. But I said, that was the old me. This is the new me now. So I then left and went, had to take a bathroom break. And, and then I came back in and as I was out there, the Lord touched my heart and he said, you know, you don't want to miss an opportunity to witness right here. Um, they are looking for something. You want, you want to grab this opportunity. So one of the young ladies uh, is not from natural our, our country. She's from somewhere else. And so she was saying to me, she said, you mean to tell me you really went to nightclubs and parties and stuff? I said, yeah. I said, why didn't you? What was it like? I said, what you mean, what was it like? Didn't you go? She said, no, I've never been. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, you just do what everybody else do. Everybody's partying, having fun, drinking, doing whatever they do, whatever you like. That's what you do. She said, oh. And so now as the Lord touched my heart, he said, you don't want to miss an opportunity to witness. So I have a website, and I don't know if some of you have been there, but you're, you're welcome to go. And the Lord allowed me to just kind of uncover. So I've laid out my life story. Not all of it is there, but it's enough there. Amen. And as time goes on, there'll be more. So it's at, I'll tell you, it's my name. It's Esther, E-S-T-H-E-R, P as in Paul, I-N-K, S T is in Tom O N dot com. www.estherpinkston.com. And when you get down the home page and you scroll down, you'll see where it says my path. And it'll begin to tell you my journey when I gave my life to the Lord and how things travel on through and whatever. And I didn't understand when God was having me write that. I knew I couldn't die with it in me. I knew that I had to get some things out of me. I had to get some testimonies. I had to share some things. So I knew I couldn't go away with this stuff in me. The graveyard, remember I shared with you, is full of books and, and it's full of songs, unwritten songs, unwritten books. There's a whole bunch of untold testimonies in the graveyard. And we go through things and we think this that it's all about us, that Whatever we went through in life, it's, it's just all about me, myself, and I. But it's not about me, myself, and I. It's about the kingdom of God. When you look back through the scriptures, you'll see everybody that we admire today, that we read about today in the Word of God, they have a testimony of a past life. Paul had one. Peter had one. Esther had one. She was adopted. There was tons and tons. Everybody you read about, they had a past life. But then Paul wrote in Corinthians, I believe first or second chapter, I can't remember, I don't have it in front of me right now, but he said, 
and such were some of you, but you have been washed. You have been made clean. Yet now we are, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm not the old Queen Esther that people knew. I'm a new creation in Christ. I have a new DNA. That's what God does for us. That's what his blood does for us. That's what this Easter thing that we're, that celebration that we're working with, right? It's, it's all about God so loved the world. Let me read that. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he didn't want me to die in the state that I was in. He provided a way for me to get out of that. So as he used people, like he's using me now with those folks, he used people, he planted people into my life that stirred a curiosity. I began to see how they were and how, how they spoke, um, how I would listen and, and, and I wouldn't hear foul language coming out of their mouths. And it seemed like they weren't trying to hide it. It seemed like it just wasn't in there. Uh, how they would take a negative uh, situation that they would run into and some kind of way they would find, uh, find how to turn it into a positive or, and, and, and it kind of annoyed me in a sense of speaking because I thought, now wait a minute, can't nobody really be like this. I mean, seriously? Um, okay, let's, let's talk about this. Here we go. Yesterday, you know, I go to work early. I'm at five o'clock, I'm clocking in. So when the, when the daylight breaks, you know, so here we get, we get some, little, we get snow in New York and then we get a little sunshine and then we get a little something else there. And so folks are like, oh man, it's snowing. Can you believe it? And, 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 and I'm going like, well, this, this it's a lousy. I said, no, this is a good day. This is a great day. And I'll see a couple of Christians around in the unit and we'll point upward like this. And we'll say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And it, it began to turn that negative. This, oh, yeah, well, I said, you know something? Uh, I, I, I said, I try to get on top of it. I don't know, uh, but... I have a good day from the minute that I wake up when my eyes open and I realize that I'm alive and the blood is still running through my veins. I, it's a good day for me. So I, I learned a long time ago to not let the snow deter my attitude. If I wake up and see the snow, for some people, when they wake up and see the snow, it could be a bad day all day long. Oh, my goodness, it's snowing. Oh, my goodness, it's raining. Oh my goodness, it's this, it's cloudy. It's, and so I had to, had to not allow that negativity to come into me. So I asked the Lord to give me a shield because as you read my testimony, you'll find out that I once was very negative and I won't give it away. I'll let you go over there and read it. I was very negative in, in, in a lot of things, but I, I, I had God changed me. He turned it around. Amen. So the old me now, that's gone. Amen. And the new me is here, that new creation in Christ. So he gave me his DNA. He began to say to me, it's because of me now. It's because I live. And not only am I, I, I live in you now because you accepted me as your Lord and Savior. So now I live in you via the Holy Ghost. Amen. And, and we know right now Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. This is a disclaimer. But the Holy Spirit is here and he is with us and he is in us. And if you have accepted him as Lord and Savior, he dwells in you. So he leads and guides us and gives us power to be able to function and be able to dwell. And, and, and even if we, excuse me, even if we mess up, you see, it's, it's okay because 
because he says in 1 John 1, 9, that he, 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 his blood, his love, his blood cleanses us. He forgives us. He cleanses us of all unrighteousness. Amen? You know, you know we need to know um, that God is not expecting for us to be perfect. It's not on us to be perfect. He is making us perfect. Amen. He is making us into his image. We're, we're, we're not done yet. That's why we come to him with all the, all the, the goofy stuff that we have within us. Amen. I'm going to read it for you. First John 1 9. I'm going to read it from the King James version. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it doesn't, you know, I don't deliberately make it a point to, to mess up, but I goof sometimes, not maybe in my words or something. You say something, your thoughts can be wrong. You know what I mean? Something can happen there, but you can always get cleansed by that precious blood of Jesus that he shed on Calvary for us on what we call Easter. The what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So let's get back to the story real quick and then I'll go into what I had that I was going to talk to you about today. Uh, so, so here we are. They are questioning me then. Why won't you dance for us? No, I don't dance. You know, I, I, I dance for Jesus now. You know, why, and why wouldn't you go to the nightclubs? I don't need to now. You know what I mean? I, I worship God now, so I go to the sanctuary or worship him wherever I am or wherever I can gather together with believers like we are on here today. He said, well, two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of you. Amen. Amen. So I, I you know, some of you, are, I, I'm looking at the screen now and I don't see any amens or thumbs up or something, but I know that I know that God is touching somebody's heart about what I'm saying. And I know the Holy Spirit is approving what I'm saying. So I declare and decree that God will bless you with this word. Amen. So I said to this one young lady after the Holy Spirit touched my heart, don't miss this opportunity to, to, to be a witness, to be a light. So I called her back. She came back in over to my, my section. And uh, I said, I want to show you something. And I was able to pull up my website. And I said, I want you to read my path. This is, this is, about me, you read it, and I left her alone. And I look back, and we are wearing masks, so you don't see our full face faces, but you could, I could see her eyes. And I, I look back, and she was literally crying. There were. Tears flowing down her face underneath that mask. And at that time, it caught me off guard. I, I kind of like didn't know what to do because I was caring for a, a patient and she was at my computer crying and I was standing up there. So I kind of walked over to her and touched her with my elbow and I said, oh, honey, it's, I don't know. God bless you. It's all right. You know, I, but there's a place on the website where she can leave me a comment. I told her, I said, look, we can't talk right now. Go into the comment section, con the contact page. Look where it says, leave me a comment. Write it in there. Tell me what you're, you're feeling. So she wrote me a note, and, and I won't give it all away, but she just began to share, wow, I look at you now, and you don't like, look like, you don't look like, you don't sound like, you don't act like what you've been through, what you come from. You don't look like what you've been through. God is a good God. God is a mighty God. God is an awesome God. God is a healing God. God is... I, there's another song we do. It's called, I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love with Jesus. I was in love with my, my mom. You hear me talk about all the time. I was in love with my husband. You hear me talk about him, my late husband. But I'm in love with Jesus. 
And I love him so much till I don't want to do anything to bring reproach to his name or discredit him in any way. I just want to be able to do his will in these last and evil days. And these are our last and evil days. I haven't fully found scripture to back it up all the way yet. I hear some ministers allude to it. But I know as I look through scripture, I see where the Lord said, even when they were attempting or at the crucifixion, when he said to them, if you destroy this temple, I'll raise it up again in three days. When I look into the Old Testament, you know the story of, of uh, Jonah in the belly of the whale. And he said, Three days and three nights was Jonah in the belly of the whale. I read in the Psalms where David was sharing, he said, A day in the eyes of the Lord is as 1,000 years. Well, we look at where we are and what century we in, we are in, and we see that Christ has been gone now over 2,000 years. So if we would use the Psalms, we would say that's been two days. You know, I'm just saying. And we're working on the third day. I don't know if I'll be here at the ending of the third day. I don't know if you allow me to live that long. But it's letting us know he's definitely on his return. He's on his way back. And we look at what is going on in the world today. Coronavirus 19, I believe was not just there. It was, it was planned for something. See, the enemy is very cunning. He, his, 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 his definition in the scriptures says that he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he doesn't care whom or who he uses to get the job done. It can be authority, people in, 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 in you know, high authoritative positions, or it can be anyone. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. All he cares about is destroying our faith in God. And if our faith is destroyed in God, and then we, in turn, lose our lives, be it through sickness, car accident, somebody shoots or kills, however you lose it, then you're lost. Because you, you don't go to spend eternity with Christ. And that was Jesus' purpose, remember? I just read it to you in John 3.16. He said, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish, should not be destroyed, should not die, should not, you know, you're going to physically die, but, you know, but have everlasting life so that we will be able to live with him eternally. That's God's desire. So, I want to share this with you as the Holy Spirit is quickening my spirit to someone that's listening. None of us want to die or should want to die before our time. As a matter of fact, I declare and decree right now that no one under the sound of my voice right now or in the future that will hear this will die before your time. I declare and decree that you will fulfill your destiny before you leave this earth. Amen. I declare and decree that in the name of Jesus. Now, no one wants uh, to die. But if you leave this earth, it would be better to leave knowing Jesus, having accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior than to go without knowing. Listen, I've had people ask me over the years, they say, so-and-so passed away, would you pray for them? It's not in the scripture for us to pray for the dead that has gone. Jesus said, work while it is day. At night, no man can work. We need to make our decisions now. We need to make our decisions to get to know the Lord now. While we are alive, while we have our right mind, and we can make choices. We need to do it now. 
We don't need to wait and think, well, at my last breath, I'll be able to make that decision. They said, well, I'll be like the thief on the cross. Thank God that the thief on the cross had an opportunity to get it right at that time with Jesus before he died. But that's not promised to us. We need to do it now and then beyond just getting Jesus in our lives, accepting Jesus in our lives so that uh, we will go to heaven. We need him now so that we can be on this earth and be busy about the work of the Lord. Do you know right now, many, many Christians, mature and some younger, fought against social media with all of their heart, soul, and mind. I don't want anything to do with that social media thing, that blah, 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 blah. I was, uh, uh, someone I can remember hearing uh, my grandparents and parents talk about, if it was meant for me to fly, God would have given me wings. I don't want to have anything to do with them fancy cars and all of this stuff. Well, we are thrown into a setting where people that are mature, boomers, whatever you want to call them, they are learning now that this social media, this tool, it is a tool that God has given us. And the idea came from God. The enemy has, can only copy, as my pastor says, what is genuine. God had downloaded this idea. And, and, and the, the, the world and the flesh and the devil can take it and use it for something else. If you look for evil on it, you will find evil on it. But if you look for good on it, you will find good on it. Pastors now are ministering now to their congregation. And you know what God is doing with it? He is allowing churches and pastors in for the word to reach people that normally would have never stepped into a church building. I know I'm right. I don't have to get an amen or thumbs up. I don't have to get anything. I know that I'm telling the truth. They are reaching people now that would have, they have, would have never met. And they are getting them to hear the word. Doors are being opened. People are learning to use Zoom. They are learning to use you know, conference calls that they normally wouldn't use just for work. They're learning to use social media, Instagram, Twitter. The word is all, I mean, it's flooding, it's flooding, it's flooding. There's no famine of the word. The word is getting out. And I want to say to you, let God use you. I'm no longer a slave of fear, but I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave of fear, but I am a child of God. Fear will cause you to say, I could never do that. I wonder what they would think about me. What if, what if, what if they don't like what I have to say? Well, you know something my motto has been, and I heard someone else say it the other night, and, and it really uh, just touched my spirit because I know I'm not the only one. I have found out that people will Talk about you, one, if you do good, two, if you don't do good. People will just talk. People are going to like what you do, and they'll talk. People are going to not like what you do, and they're going to talk. You see, if you sit still and don't do anything, people will criticize you, or they'll talk about you. If you stand up and you decide to do something, people will criticize you and they'll talk. People just talk. They've been talking since the beginning of time and they're not going to stop talking now. If you understand what I'm saying. Amen. So you have to make up your mind then. Is this the way that, is this my destiny? Is, is this my legacy? I'm going to just let outside influences control me that I'll never stand up and be on the battlefield for the Lord. I'll, I'll never obey that voice that I hear inside of me saying, it's your time. 
This is your time now. This is what you were born to do. You remember when you were a child and I was calling you? You remember when you were you were in school and I would inspire you to do something and, and you would always stand back and be afraid? You would be a wallflower? Why? Because you felt you weren't popular enough? You felt that, that they won't like me, they won't accept me? You felt like I would be the last one that they would call to play basketball. I'm just sitting here and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. I've been practicing and practicing. I know that I can shoot great from the free throw line. I can hit three pointers. I know that I'm good, but they won't call me. I just got a feeling they won't call me. And if they call me, they're going to say something negative. Okay, I got everybody. I guess I'm all right. Okay, then I'll take Queen Esther. Come on. Huh? No, you purpose in your heart. If I got to play, by myself. I'll get out there and I'll just do it. By, I'll play by myself. If I have to read by myself, if I have to start a, a book club by myself, if I have to do it, by, I'm going to do something and I'm going to do something good. I'm going to do something that will build up and encourage another person. And that leads me into what we're going to close with. It leads me into the golden rule. The golden rule, and right now with this coronavirus, we need to focus on the golden rule. Not everybody is being kind. You know, some of the weaker ones are being attacked and people of color are being looked at now as if we're the ones that cause the coronavirus. They're doing that in China with the Africans, <laughs> you know, because uh, I've been studying a lot over there and in in, in YouTubing a lot, trying to understand what's going on. It started in China, and then now China then turned, you know, kicking blacks out of China. Don't want to have anything to do with them over there, but yet they leave China and they're going to Africa. The doctors are because they want to, you know, you know, listen, this is all... If you don't have your eyes on the Lord, and if you don't know that people that are different than you have been persecuted since the beginning of time, blacks have always had to go through a battle regardless of what it is. You can't see this now as this is the only time. It's always been there for us. We've always come through. Talk to if you have any. Your, your, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, anybody that could still be alive, they'll let you know this is not new. But you have to have someone bigger and greater than you to give you strength and to give you wisdom and to give you the power to keep on keeping on. So the golden rule says, this is Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. So then, whatever you desire, that others would do to and for you. Even so do also to and for them. What this is, parenthesis sums up, the law and the prophets. It sums up the whole deal. It, it boils down to love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. <clears throat> Then love your neighbor as yourself. It comes to love. It's all about love. Amen. Many of us, I'm going to read a note here. Many of us learn as children to recite the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do uh, unto you. In other words, treat people the way you want to be treated. If you respect, if you want respect, then treat people the way you want to be treated. If you want respect, then uh, treat people with respect. If you want people to be patient with you, be patient with people. If you want people to forgive you, be quick to forgive. We learn the rule as children. Some of us did anyway. But do we practice it as adults? Are we Christians practicing it as adults? Listen, don't worry about the world because they are not held accountable to 
the golden rule, even though many of them, they know about these Bible principles and they follow them sometimes better than Christians do. Most of your large businesses and whatever you see where people prosper, it's built off of the, 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 the principles of the scriptures. They might not give Jesus credit for it, but it's built off the principles. They know about sowing and reaping and all of that stuff. It's built off the principles of the scriptures. So the, the, the golden rule. So what is he saying here now? Don't look at somebody that don't know the Lord. See all those people that I was talking about. Some of them walk with the Lord. Maybe not. We're all at different levels. You understand? So I couldn't judge them. But I had, I had to acknowledge the fact that I was once right where they are. Here it is. One of the greatest holidays of, of the Christian faith, the worshiping times, the resurrection of Christ. And I'm being asked, why don't I go to a nightclub? And I couldn't see the parallel. I couldn't see the parallel. I'm like, what in the world? Why would you be asking me, have I ever gone to a nightclub or do I drink or whatever is going on? And I'm like, huh? Did I ever do it? They know I don't now. But they were asking me, did I ever do that? And when I was able to tell them, yes, I realized then I had to treat them. See, once I had questions like that, once when I looked at Christians, and you remember I just told you that earlier, and, and I saw them and I thought their mouths, they, they, were, they were speaking like, like rightfully saying things and, and they were acting right. And I'm like, did you always do that? How did you get like that? What happened? And I'm able to tell them now, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Amen. So, treat other people. It would have been wrong for me to come off on them. Like, look, can't you, don't you know I walk with the Lord? And don't you know, don't you know who I am? How can you dare ask me that? No, 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 no. That would have been wrong. And I thank God that he didn't give me that frame of mind. I had to come back with them with, with love. <laughs> yeah. And then explain it because they really did not understand it. They, they, they are, they, if they're walking with the Lord, they have a knowledge of him. They don't know about the change that God does in your life. They don't know that you get to a place where the golden rule becomes a part of your everyday living. You actually want to treat other people the way that, that you want to be treated. Listen, many of my clients, many of my patients, they, they say things and sometimes I, I can, it, it just humbles my heart. It humbles my heart. I'm trying to tell you, I haven't always been this way. So it humbles my heart. When I'm caring for them, one said to me yesterday, this gentleman had, had unexpectedly suffered a detached retina. That's a scary thing. He, he had had some eye surgery done and some stuff and he, he he went home, he thought he was doing fine, he was seeing good, he said. 2040, 2020, 2040, after he did the surgery and everything was working great with him. And he said he was sitting and he was watching TV and all of a sudden it went black. And he couldn't see anything and he said he thought the lights went out. I said, oh my Lord. And I began to say, okay, what'd you do? And of course he had to, to um, call in and, uh, you know, explain some stuff and go through a process so that they could get him somewhere to get treated. So when he returned yesterday for treatment, he was one of my, my clients. And I didn't know that this had happened to him because I hadn't gotten a report. So I just said hello to him like usual and I thought he saw me, but they recognized my voice. So he goes, hello, you know, like that. And so finally I'm going to get him and getting ready to do his treatment. And I'm realizing that He's not walking like usual, and <laughs> they're bringing him in in a wheelchair, and I'm going, okay, now, are you all right? And he goes, no, I can't see. And I go, you, you can't see? He said, yeah, I can't see. Oh, okay. So then I do what I do and get him situated and everything, and I'm going like, okay, now, now what happened? And he goes on to share with me what I just shared with you. I had some stuff done and blah, blah, blah. 
I went home, everything was fine. I was sitting, I was watching TV, and then whammo, everything went pitch black, and I couldn't see anymore. So he says, now they did surgery. They said, you know, hopefully, you know, certain length of time, I'll be able to get back at least partially the sight, you know, that I had. I thought, oh my God. And so as we went on, I began to work with him. He began to tell me how, I told him, I said, well, look, don't you worry. I have a little saying that I say to my clients, don't worry, I got you. Everything is okay. We're going to take good care of you. Don't you worry about a thing. That's what I usually say to them. And they'll say to me over and over, I'm not worried. I know you're going to take care of me. I'm not worried. I, I feel a peace with you working with me. I'm okay with that. And, and then, it, then they begin to say things like, you show compassion. You, we're not just another number to you. Um, many times when you, many times when you, when, when folks go into a restaurant or a facility or a doctor's office or you go somewhere, you're treated like another number. But he said, you don't treat us like another number. You, you, we feel you. It's like you care. And I began to say to them, I said, you know, I thank you. I, I, I pray that I never end up in this chair. I said, but I have had a loved one that was in this, in this seat, in this chair. They say, we know. And I said, I, I, I feel you. I know what you're going through. I understand. I can't feel your pain, but I can understand where you are with this. And yes, you know, we care. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. That's the golden rule, amen? Show love. So now as spirit-filled believers, as people that have accepted the Lord in our life, now it's different with us. So I want to read this next passage before we pray. It says, as a spirit-filled believer, you need to take the initiative to treat people the way you want to be treated, not the way they treat you. Whoa, we just got an order. We just got a command. It's turned around now. It's on us. Even if someone mistreats us, we must treat them the way that we would like to be treated in that situation. So if someone make a fun of you or do something awful, some kind of way, you got to be able to turn it around. I don't know how to tell you what to do. Uh, you say, but yeah, this, what you're talking about is, is not. Yeah, see, I, I haven't had anyone spit on me, and I pray that that doesn't happen. Someone did have that happen to them. Um with this coronavirus thing going on. I haven't had um, anyone uh, do anything violent to me in that sense. And I pray that that doesn't happen. I pray that I'll be able to survive. I, don't, I have no idea. But I know with the Holy Spirit in me, God will protect me. I don't fear someone spitting on me because I believe that I'm covered under the blood. I believe that I'm, 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 I'm covered. And what do I mean by covered? Again, this is Easter. We're talking about the blood of Jesus. Amen. All right. So in the Old Testament, at Passover, the death angel was going to pass over. That was one of the last, that was the last plague, remember, that God sent to Pharaoh. And he was going, before he let the, let the children of Israel, of, of Israel leave from bondage, from 400 years of bondage. They had to go and they had to kill a lamb, a perfect lamb with no blemish, no blemishes at all. And they had to take that blood and they had to apply it over the post, the, the door, top, top of the door where they live and down the lentils, but mainly the door post. And the scripture says, when the death angel saw the blood, he would pass over that house. Whoever was in that house, when the death angel saw that blood, he would pass over. Now, be it Christian or non-Christian, if you did not obey, 
if you did if 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 that blood, if Joshua and Moses hadn't applied that blood, that applied that blood over your doorpost, you would have died. It wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. What how does that apply to us? Today Jesus is our Passover lamb. He died one time for all time. And his blood that we are celebrating today, tomorrow, and should be forever, is the blood by faith that we apply over our doorposts, over our lentils, over our tabernacle where we dwell, so that the death angel will pass over us by faith. And as we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, now, it also is for you and your house. It's for you and your house, because in your household, because there are people that are in your household that might not be saved. They might not have accepted Jesus yet. They might believe that this thing that we're calling Easter is just about some eggs, just about some Easter bonnies, just about eating a lot of chocolate candy, just about going out buying a new dress and putting on a new suit and carrying an Easter basket. That might be what they think it is. But you and I should know, it's about life. It's about protection. It's about healing. It's about deliverances. It's about eternal life. It's about being able to live on this earth right now in this dark and evil days and be a, excuse me, and be a light that is set on a hill just like you see that light shining, we are a light. I'm a light on my job. You're a light on your job. You're a light in your home. You're a light to your friends. You can't go to them now, but you can be a light. You can tell them, you know what? I'm getting into the word. I'm getting to know Jesus. I'm maybe on lockdown, but I'm getting a closer relationship with the Lord. I'm falling in love with Jesus. I'm finding out what this Jesus thing is all about. This is one time for Easter that I won't allow any of the distractions to come in. I want to know what Jesus did on that cross. I want to know what it's all about, and I want to know how it affects me and how I can use it. Oh, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's get ready. I got to go. I got to go. Here we go. I want to go back to that passion. As a spirit-filled believer, you need to take the initiative to treat people the way you want to be treated, not the way they treat you. This, mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is to family members right now, the ones of you that are saved and your children are getting on your nerves and all because everybody's there. Take a breather. Slow down. Show the love of God. If you have to go into the bathroom and that's your place you can get away for a moment, do that. But just still show the love of God. Amen? Hallelujah. That was for somebody. All right. Don't wait for someone else to do what is right. Be the one who does what is right first. Be the one who does what is right first. You do what is right. It's on you. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Don't point at somebody else. We're all pointing at other people, and I'm guilty of that. God, forgive me. Sometimes I'll point something at our president. I'll point something at our leaders. I got to point at me. Let it begin with me. Learning how to treat people will dramatically change your life. I treat others with love and respect. I treat others with love and respect. Amen. Hallelujah. I treat you, my listeners, with love and respect. I thank you for coming in today. I don't know what you're doing for your Easter celebration. I pray that you can tune in to an online service, to a Zoom. I know my pastor will be here on Facebook Live, first thing in the morning, 9 o'clock. You are welcome to tune in. And if you don't get on my page, just go to David J. Singleton, and he'll be right there. Amen? Because we're going to be using as much technology as we can. 
we're going to be using Zoom, we're going to be using Facebook, we're going to be using, I don't know if there's conference calls, I don't know what's going on. But we are not allowing this devil of coronavirus 19 to hinder us from sharing the word of God. Devil, Corona 19, you might have meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. He's turning it around for good. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that somebody is free today. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God bless you. Without God, I can do nothing. Without God, I would fail. Without God. would be drifting, oh yeah, just like a ship without a sail, without God, I can do nothing, without be drifting, oh yeah, like a ship without a sail. One last time. Without God, I can do nothing. Without God. would fail without God my life would be drifting like a ship without a sail God bless you all. Father, I just thank you and I bless you and I praise you right now for each and every voice here. Bless them, keep them, Lord God. Give them everything that they need. I declare and decree healing. I declare and decree freedom, peace of mind in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them enjoy this lockdown like never before. Let them get rest, Lord. Don't see it as a time of, of, of Lord God, disturbing what they normally do, but say, I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it for the glory of God. I'm going to get my rest, my peace. I'm going to love my children. I want to learn how to be a family again. I want to learn how to just be at peace. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you provide the food that's needed, everything that's needed. Everything that's needed. I thank you because you're Jehovah Jireh. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen and amen. I will see you again soon. Amen. God bless you. Love you all. Bye-bye.